Well, guess what, folks? VS Code has just rebranded itself. It is now the open source AI code editor. It's not a feature announcement, of course. This is a rebrand. It's an identity change. And we developers have just inherited it, whether we like it or not. So for many years, VS Code has won the editor wars by simply being this fast, free, and just out of the way code editor. Right? It's just a simple code editor. You bring in your extensions, you bring in your workflow, you bring in your opinions, and it just gets out of the way. 70% of developers trust it as their daily tool. That's the usage stat right now. 70% of developers use VS Code. It has become kind of like this default code editor by not telling you how to work. Now, if you go to the VS Code homepage, it says open source AI code editor. Now, what does it mean? when the world's most popular code editor decides it's no longer just an editor, it's an AI editor. Does it even mean anything? Does it make any difference? And what happens to the developers who all this while wanted just a neutral tool? The real question isn't whether AI belongs in your code editor or not, because that's been answered, folks. Now, literally every IDE is an AI editor, right? The industry has already clearly answered that. The question is, what does open source AI editor actually mean when the AI models themselves are still proprietary? Let me, let me tell you what's going on. Now think back about why exactly VS Code won the editor wars and became the most popular code editor. It wasn't because it had more features. IntelliJ was way more powerful. Vim has been feature packed and productive for decades. And it's not also even the speed. Sublime text is fast. And again, Vim is much faster. VS Code won because of a philosophy. It is to be lightweight and stay neutral and let developers bring their own opinions. Give them those options and give them a vibrant extension ecosystem and let the developer choose. So this has created something like a platform and it's very powerful. It's not just an editor, right? VS Code is a platform and that's the reason why 70% of the developers have ended up using it. And Microsoft didn't push it but because VS Code got out of the way, it just did its marketing on its own and just let the developers work. The neutrality was the product. But now that is changing a little bit. And also this rebrand didn't come out of the blue. VS Code has been quietly becoming an AI editor for years now. And the tagline I think is just caught up because way back in 2021, GitHub Copilot was launched as a VS Code extension. At first, it felt like just another extension. You could do autocomplete, you could install it or ignore it. The editor stays neutral, right? But Copilot started becoming more and more popular. It became generally available. Then they introduced Copilot Chat, which was like an AI assistant that lived in your sidebar. That's actually a very common pattern now. But at that time, people hated it. And this set of features were promoted heavily, but even then, there were still additions to VS Code and not the core identity. In 2024, things started becoming a little more integrated. They added the AI toolkit extension. And if you look at the release notes for the last year, it started focusing more and more on co-pilot improvements. There were hardly any changes being done to the editor itself or the code authoring experience itself. It was more about co-pilot. Right? It was, you could see where this was heading if you really saw the release notes. But VS Code still called itself a code editor. Right? The tagline still said something like code editing redefined. It was the standard tagline for many, many years. Right? AI was still just a feature. It wasn't the core identity. But in 2025, this was made official. VS Code would become an open source AI editor. And they shipped a few structural changes along with it. And to their credit, they also made a few things open source. So for example, the GitHub Copilot chat extension was open source under the MIT license, right? All the prompts, the data flows, the integration logic, they were all visible on GitHub. So anyone could inspect it and fork it and create their own extensions. And in November, the inline suggestions component was also open source. If you're not familiar, it's like the ghost code that shows up when you're typing in Copilot suggests code as you type. That part was also open source. And now in December, VS Code has gone all in on agent decoding. 
right? Now, agent decoding isn't new. Cursor, WinSurf, and a bunch of others have had it for a while. But VS Code's implementation is a slightly different one. They've added something called Agent HQ, which is like a central dashboard for managing a bunch of agents. I think Cursor is copied from that. So there's a bunch of copying happening all over the place, right? You see similar features being developed in all these different IDEs. So that's happening to VS Code as well. And now we are at a point where VS Code is saying we are not just adding AI features, we are kind of rebuilding the editor around AI. And so the product has changed, and more importantly, the philosophy of what was VS Code has changed a lot. Now, let me address that tension. There is a little bit of a dissonance here. So you say open source AI code editor, which sounds great. And the team has made some good decisions, some bad decisions. The good part, of course, like I said, they've genuinely open sourced a lot of the meaningful pieces, right? The First of all, the editor itself, MIT licensed. A lot of other vendors have taken that and made money from it, like Cursor, WinServe. They've basically taken that open source solution and they've built companies around it, which is great, right? VS Code kind of started that. And then all the AI integration code is also MIT licensed. You can understand the data flows, you can verify what is being collected and all that. But the layer above it, which is the AI models, they are proprietary, right? They're running on Microsoft service. They require a subscription and you have a free tier limit, but you know how it is with all these free tier limits. Once you go past that, you are basically hooked and you have to pay the subscription service, right? So the wrapper is open, but the intelligence inside is not. But if you think about it, that's the reality of AI today, right? Training large language models, it costs hundreds of millions of dollars, right? You do have open source, open weight models that you can run locally, but they aren't nearly as good as these vendors like OpenAI and Anthropic and Google. You really cannot pack that logic and that intelligence into a GitHub repo, right? But the point is that it does create this dynamic now. When Microsoft says VS Code is open source, they're being partially accurate. The platform is open, but the service is not. The AI service is not. So far, the AI service was an addition, so you could still say, yes, VS Code is open source, but now, if AI is the focus and the main identity, can you really call this an open source editor anymore? Or is it open source with proprietary AI integration? And this matters because transparency was a part of the VS Code's original appeal, right? You could see the code, you could modify it, you could fork it, you knew what was running. Now there is a layer that you cannot see, which is the AI, and that's becoming more and more central to the experience. Now, there are a lot of people who hate this. There are a lot of people who hate AI encroaching into the VS Code space. But if you think about it, they don't really have much choice, right? The competitive pressure is real from all directions. On the one hand, you have the AI native editors that are eating into VS Code's market share. Like Cursor is the obvious threat. Like I said, it is the VS Code fork, but it was built for AI first, and that's growing exponentially, right? There was this recent survey that around 500,000 developers switched to it in a very short period of time, which is a huge growth for a new tool. There's Windsurf, which is rebranded from, uh, it was called Codium at the time, it's focusing entirely on the AI editor. There is another solution called Z, which is a Rust-based editor, and again, that is focusing on AI. Everything is focusing on AI, and even the classic IDEs aren't just standing still. JetBrains has been aggressively adding AI across IntelliJ, all of their solutions. And uh, Visual Studio itself, the full IDE, not Visual Studio Code, is also being positioned as an AI-driven environment. So the overall pattern is clear. AI is the baseline expectation in any code authoring experience. Like, everybody's going AI. So I think the VS Code team saw this and made a bit of a strategic choice. If AI-first editors are the future, VS Code needs to be an AI-first editor, not have AI features, but be defined by them. And the open source angle is a bit of a differentiator here because Cursor is an open source, right? By making the AI integration transparent here, I think the Visual Studio Code team is betting that this trust matters, especially for enterprise customers who need to audit what data is being collected. Well, you can make an argument that, well, Cursor is proprietary, you have no idea what Cursor does, but VS Code, you can see the code. So the AI layer is proprietary, well, you can't avoid it, but the editor at least, you know what's going on.
that's one potential argument, right? But not all developers see it this way. There are like different groups of people. And like I was looking at the reactions and there have been a lot of strong reactions for this over the years, right? You can see the change log in VS Code. It's AI, AI, AI everywhere. So in that sense, this rebranding seems like a very honest and direct and clear messaging. They're being honest about what direction they're heading. Like every release notes is already saying that, so they might as well call VS Code as an AI editor. Now, you can be skeptical about this and say, well, VS Code is getting more and more bloated. The focus on AI means non-AI improvements have slowed down and you know, I don't want AI, I just want a fast code editor. Well, it sucks because it has slowed down. If you look at the recent changes, I don't think they've made a lot of changes to the core editing experience. And then, of course, the privacy concern is always there. The data collection is opt-out. And whenever there is an opt-out, there's always this question about how many people are going to opt-out. So people are going to go with the default experience and their data is going to be collected. That seems a little bad, right? Well, all of these are very valid considerations. There are very valid opinions, but which camp you are in, it depends on what you value more. So this is the state of the world as far as AI and development experience is concerned, right? The entire industry is moving in this direction. So VS Code's market dominance means that their decisions will push expectations or set expectations, and they're not the only ones making this bet. So what does it mean for us, for you and me, right? If you like AI, if you want to embrace the VS Code's AI direction, well, you're in luck. This integration is getting deeper and deeper than ever, right? You're getting a whole lot of AI features. I think this change and rebranding is going to make them a little more bold and open. They don't have to make the pretense that AI is a separate thing. They can integrate more and more AI features. It just makes it open, right? That's good if you like AI. But if you want VS Code without the AI, well, technically you can still disable these features in settings, at least for now. There is a switch which you can disable and you, know, you can look it up. You can just keep the core editing functionality. That part hasn't changed. And if you don't even want to do that, there is VS Codium, which is a community fork of VS Code, because VS Code is open source after all. So there is a community fork which does not have all of these things. So it's called VS Codium. You can try that out. But if you don't want that too, that's a problem. What are your alternatives? You have Cursor, which is a paid experience is like $20 a month or something like that. It's it's a VS Code fork. So your experience with VS Code kind of translates to that, the muscle memory, the shortcuts and all that stuff. Even the extensions translate, but it's proprietary. There is an alternative called Z, which is interesting. And I want to try that out. I haven't tried that out yet, but that sounds very promising because what you can do there is you can bring your own API keys and you can run models locally. They're not the best, but they're better than nothing, and your data all stays in your computer. It's not going to go out. You can host a LLM model locally, and you can connect to that using Z, which is great, right? And you have a bunch of others as well. You have NeoWeb, we have Helix, which are terminal-based options, and they have zero corporate dependencies. And you have Klein, you have Continue, which are also open source projects, and they too let you bring in your own models which are promising if you value that. Now, VS Code has Enterprise Copilot, which explicitly doesn't use your data for its training, right? The free tier has an opt-out in settings, and because Copilot chat code is now open source, you can inspect what data flows there. So this might be an important thing for enterprises. Large enterprises probably don't want to roll out an open source fork and have the burden of support. They're probably going, okay, I'm just going to use the uh, enterprise version, which now VS Code has a benefit because that code is open source. But the real question is this. VS Code won the ID wars by being neutral. It became default precisely because it didn't take a stance, right? You could use it for any language, any framework, any workflow. It was kind of like a blank canvas, right? You had to bring in extensions and it kind of gave you a clean starting point. But now it has an identity. It is an AI code editor. The tool that defined itself by staying out of your way is now putting AI at the center of your experience. The team is being transparent about it, which is great. And you can opt out, which is great, but the default has shifted and the philosophy has shifted as well. So when 70% of the developers use a tool and that tool makes such a decision that shapes what normal looks like, 
So now the question is, do we want to use that as it is? Or you want a fast neutral text editor that stays out of the way? Where do you go? I don't know, but I'm curious to see what you think. Are you embracing the AI direction? Are you sticking with VS Code and ignoring these features? Are you turning them off? Or are you looking at alternatives? Let me know in the comments.